And there's everybody. Yay. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Can the chat? Who knows? Who knows? If you are in the chat, we're very glad to have you here for... Oh, what is this now? Episode 8? 8. Interesting. So, episode 8. I'm uh, calling it Down for the Count. For... <laughs> <laughs> so, last here. Previously. <laughs> uh, Mortu Hansi, that exiled Vistani, and a special green Auntie Jenny gave warnings about Count Strahd's bloodthirst and secret malice. Torin Forrester and Aya Glenmere, our wizard elf friend, were looking for the rest of the party, for her elf students, and instead found spiders and edder caps. On their way back to the Vistani camp, Sigrid, Hannah, and Mr. Tree have possibly found eternal darkness, courtesy of a blighted forest. And as all of these party members are in dire straits, Dantir and Torin face a scene of infested Vistani, and they possibly come across their long lost father at last. I say long lost because he's supposed to be dead. Dead. <laughs> Long dead dad. Long dead dad. That's just one of those things. So <laughs> we have uh, <laughs> a one one si the one silent one one as dragonborn druid Mr. Tree, Miss Misery as the uh, honorable fighter Secret, Thimbraeus as the inquisitive bard Dantir, Squid Kittens as the oft tested cleric of Kellenvor Torin Forester. And Bad Wolf as the indebted artificer, Hannah. <laughs> so, there you are. So I think... Uh, I'm going to start with the ones in Consumed in Darkness. That as your minds, Sigrid, Mr. Tree, Hannah, in your minds, it is dark and you are plagued by visions of leather-winged creatures flitting through the dense canopy of the Svalik woods and all around you can just feel the ever-present mists lingering and looming and almost imperceptibly at first you hear the sound of crying though it's still stifled and muted by thick and impenetrable mists and a familiar voice fills your mind one you'd heard not too long ago it's the voice of the hag jenny green teeth obsession consumes her absent heart which lay in pieces for envy poisons every other part and yearns for something more Every breath she will ever make is a wish for Lord Strahd's love. For obsessions now seek to take box, mirror, comb, and glove. First the mourning mother, next the bride misdone. Third comes a man, both dog and bird, and last, the greediest one. With their success she prevails, so stop them if you can. Though now she only cries and wails, soon her joy might undo the land. And Jenny's voice fades into nothing. And Sigrid, Mr. Tree, and Hannah, roll your first death saves. Woo woo! Mm -hmm. That's a 13 for Hannah. Yeah. Three! Yeah! Oh no! One second. Tissues. Trying to do things on a laptop, yeah. <laughs> Not doing well. Oh, me, me too. <laughs> uh, what do we got for Hannah? She got a 13? 13. There you go, that's a yeah. roll. swing. Did I roll? No, I didn't roll. Okay. 
There you go for Mr. Tree. You got a three. <gasps> Ooh, 19. 19. Just, just, just a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So close. Okay, uh, Dantier and Torn Forester. You're in the middle of something. Um, We're fighting some stuff. There are some things here. So Aya Glenmere, our elf friend, was looking for her two students, Erlen, Shadowbriar, and uh, Nimmel. And they were found. Praise someone. Well, <laughs> maybe praise Loth, because after she found in the center of the like a 20 foot wide cocoon of webbing. Uh, a lot of bodies fell out of there as she cut it open with her dagger. And, uh, mm, got a lot of, a lot of bodies. And when she found her two students, Nimmel seemed a little out of it. Uh, something with his eye, we heard. But Erlen, maybe like the, maybe like his namesake, the lost elven city is gone and because from as soon as his body fell from the cocoon and landed on the floor it burst open with incubating spiders and just those thousands of newly hatched spiders are just the size of like coins just writhing and washing over all of the Vistani, who's landed on the floor, and Aya and Nimmel, and uh, uh, they, oh, she's uh, hurt, you think, by lots of the bites that are happening. And for Dantir and Torin, who see this happening, I need you to do a horror saving throw. So this would be a charisma saving throw. Beautiful. That is going to be a 19. And a 14 for Torin. Okay. Uh, for Dantir, uh, you're, it's not like you get ever get used to these sort of things, but uh, at least Aya's alive, and Nimmel's probably alive there. From you, uh, I, I want to say like uh, the 120 feet. They've been, okay. you know, they're quite a distance away, so maybe that would have helped on that part. For Torin... Your dead dad showed up. He's talking to you like you're a kid. You're 40. And uh, his ears have been cut off. He's using a wand. And you you remember him being like a cell sword, kind of? Well, in his better yeah. days. Um, also, the spider's bursting. That's probably not helping. So, Torin, roll me a d100. No, no. As this just becomes too much. Becomes blue, becomes blue. 40. Hey. <laughs> hey, how about that? Yeah. Um, of this situation, the spiders bursting out of this body, your dead father come back and presuming a parental role, and Dantir just coming out of the bushes into this entire scene. Which one of those would Torin be the most afraid and not wanting to confront? Um, his father, because he doesn't want to think that his father is undead, because it means he will have to kill him because of his duty to kill him for. Uh, his his skin is definitely kind of a dusky pallor. Uh, so Torin Forrester is has become frightened and must use his action and movement. Uh each round to flee from the sight of your father uh, try not to look at him for about five minutes okay and okay so uh the of the two of you um i guess roll initiative let's see who you get who starts first on that one yeah. okay. i think i do I rolled a seven. I rolled a natural 20. Okay, so you probably go first. <laughs> okay, so um, Dantir, you've come up to the scene. Uh, you're a bit distance away from Torin ahead of you. She has been, he has been fending off two header caps. There were three, but he took them down. 
How so, far away is Torin from Dontier? Uh, within running distance, I would say. Okay, um, double move or yes. Okay, uh, Dontier is going straight to Torin. Okay. There it goes. There's two edder caps. Those pulsing, blobby, multi-eyed kind of spider things, just less limbs, and of course and... a bunch of webs. Uh, as he gets up to him, he's just going to say, we need to leave now. Everyone is dead. Eyes screaming over there in the distance. And uh, your father, Belkis, saying, Dant here? What? Where? Who is everyone else? You're not our father. Kendrick Cothilian, if I am not your father, would I have this? And he pulls out what Dantir, you remember, was his best sword. And it comes out of a sheath that you remember it from when you were little. This was when you must have been five or six. And you weren't supposed to be playing with it. But your dad had always told you stories of what they had to go through when your uncle Aram had kind of taken over the royal house. How your father and Torin had to live on their own going from place to place until they finally found the merchant caravan that took your family in. And there's, from that time when you were, well, okay, it's not five or six, you were definitely six. Um, because you could only carry it so far. This, even the sheath was a little taller than you were at the time. You grew later. But there's a mark on the sheath where you had completely by accident had a wagon wheel run over the sword and while the sword was fine it was good steel it was where more your mother had gifted to belkis uh, but there is still no matter how polished it could be just the the three inch wide dent just flat stripe uh across this sword sheath it never came out of the sheath as smoothly ever again uh, but neither belkis nor your mother mora had ever held it against you belkis had always said that it was a good thing to have a difficult time pulling out a sword. Certainly he had more ears the last time you saw him. Uh -huh. If you are our father, then help us. And I'm going to point to um, Aya, where she is, you know, being bombarded by spiders. I hope you didn't bring her here, son, because now she's as good as dead in this land. But he's going to start... Uh, he had been covered in some spiders himself. And he's taken this turn, <laughs> right. like, squishing them. <laughs> um, but he's going to squish some of those spiders. Take some damage. Uh, but start uh, making his way, uh, kind of a wide way around these edder caps. And seems to be just making a a longer way around, like he's got something going on. Uh, okay, so Torin Forrester, what you doing? So he's moving away from me. Yes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you don't. You don't even look at him as he. Comes. No, this this is a nightmare that has no end. Um, and I will look as I'm like. So there's still an edder cap in front of me. Definitely. Um, as I'm going to smash, I'm like yelling at Dantier. What do you mean everyone is dead? Smack, here comes an attack roll. 
uh, with my silver face. Oh no, that's not gonna work. Mm. But the good news is, is I still have up. my spiritual weapon. That's true. Mm-hmm. So bonus action is gonna whack at it. I wanna roll for that because I don't have that set up. It's just easier. Ooh, ooh, but that'll hit because that's a twenty-three. Oh, definitely yes. And it will take. I always forget. It's a D eight. It will take D. It will take four points of force damage. Okay. Whack. Back of the head. Not nice. And and then I'll just and I'll just keep yelling at Dant here. Oh, like, you did you see them fall? What happened? <laughs> okay. Uh, then we're gonna go over to our three people being munched on by tree blights. Uh, roll three death saves. Well, oh. One for each of you. Ooh, 19 for Hannah. That's okay. another six. Oh, geez, Louise. Eight. Six. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Die is not treating me well right now. All right. That's interesting. <laughs> Okay. I got two days, two days to say something, not bad. Yeah, for two of you, uh, there are still mists around and uh, otherwise the darkness, but there's, uh, you can almost feel something carrying you at this time. Like there are pains that you still feel, and so long as you still feel pains, you know that you still have a connection to this world. Uh, unless there's a world after that you're heading to that's nothing but pain, in which case, whoops, uh, <laughs> you'll find out soon enough. Uh, Mr. Tree, you are starting to stop feeling anything, and the mists are getting rather thick. Okay. Uh, Dantir, you're, the person who says he's your dad is making his way to around the far side of uh, these couple of Air caps, what they will yeah. be, though there's looks like there's a very wounded one in the direction that Belkis is going. Uh, what are you I'm going to attack one of the ones that's right next to me. Okay. Very good. Uh, and as I do, I'm going to shout back to my brother. They got eaten by trees. Uh, at least one or two of them stopped moving. It was pretty horrific. I barely escaped with my life. And uh, that is going to be a uh, 20, dirty 20. Okay. That definitely hits. The one closest to you. All right. And that is going to be 10 points of damage with the silvered rapier. Not bad. Um, Almost bad. I've, I forgot to add my spell damage modifier to the damage. So that is I'm sorry, fun. friends. I will do that next time. No, please add it here. This might make a difference. Um, uh, it's wisdom. It would have been plus initial three points, so force damage. Nice. Okay. Uh, this editor cap, who is near the combined forces of Dantir and Torin, is uh, on its last limbs here, it seems. And where cat, uh, where Belkis is going, there is now just one. Well, two editor caps, one in very bad shape. Aya and Nimble are have crawled out from the bulk of most of the spiders and they've gotten mostly away. And where the remaining two edder caps are, Belkis is releasing. He seems to try to remember some of the words and some of his hand motions. And for just a moment, when it's getting most frustrating, uh, he seems to be reaching for the sword that he had kept in its scabbard. But as he reaches for it, you see a pain come across his face. And he puts his hand down and reaches out again with the wand, closes his eyes, and does cast an effective spell at the two edder caps. 
and a blast of cold comes out from Belkus's wand. And as the editor caps kind of shiver. Oh, hey, God, that guy's here. I gotta. Tammy can roll my death save. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate. Uh, one of the editor caps just is frozen solid and shatters, uh, while the other is very strongly rooted to one place. And Casimir. Uh, Puts a shoulder, puts a hand on Aya's shoulder, and starts speaking with her. Though she is, they are too far away to hear what they're saying. Okay, so back to our mortal trio, Hannah, Mister Tree, and Secret, or in this case, Tammy. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and roll <laughs> death saves. Ooh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not use the mat die. Oh, gonna... oh. 11! I didn't Yay. kill her! Alright. <laughs> no! <laughs> hmm. Alright. And what did Secret get? Oh, there we go. Yay! Oh, does that mean I'm stable? Yes. So, <clears throat> we've got some results here. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, oh. we got some results here. <laughs> <laughs> One second, I have just the thing for this. So, hmm. It's a good four. I like it. Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> solid four. It's a solid <laughs> four. So for Hannah and Sigrid, wherever you are, whoever's carrying or moving your bodies, they have not done it in such a way that you have expired. You are unconscious and at the complete mercy of anyone there uh, nearby and around you. For... For Tristan Scalegrove, Mr. Tree, the mists become very thick and then part wide enough to let you catch your breath. And you are no longer being bitten, but are leaning against the wet bark of a skeletal oak. And in the distance, a now familiar howl pricks at your ears. Not distant, though. And you take off running again, but the howls are all around you. And you are stopped dead in your tracks as ahead of you a hulking mass of black fur calmly steps into the misty meadow not 20 feet from you and even turning to flee it's too late the pack has caught up entering the meadow around you are 30 50 wolves all slavering and snarling at you. And you realize something. This is what happened. This is that moment. This is what had ha when you became from teacher tree to Mr. Tree. This is what had ended your class trip. It was wolves. And as you resign yourself to the imminent and gruesome re-death, you turn once more to face that enormous mass of black fur and 
afraid you had initially thought it a dire wolf. You see, it is a dark and shrouded human, covered in pelts of hundreds of animals, most unrecognizable, and hunched over, spattered in bile and ichor, and clutching tightly to a cane made from what appears to be a femur of a giant. The figure raises a hand in greeting and then opens its palms to you in offering. And the hand itself is clawed, gnarled, and old. And it twitches and it wriggles as if it's coated in a thick layer of maggots. And the wolves behind you are advancing, but keep their distance from the dark figure. And surrounded as you are, there is only one option, to flee. But do you flee to the certain death of the wolves' sharp teeth? Or do you accept the uncertain future in the offered claw? With a vile creature before you. Oh gosh, what a choice. <sighs> what would Mr. Tree do? What would Mr. Tree do? Hold on. <laughs> I'm like, I had to roll for it. <laughs> I think it's over there. Okay, I think he would go towards the wolves. Because this is sort of just like, it's what I deserve. Okay. So as Mr. Tree turns toward the wolves, they leap. And they are on him. And... Mr. Tree is completely bowled over. And as Mr. Tree feels the bites and tears, as his fingers and limbs are pulled and rent, there's at least some solace that comes to him as he doesn't hear any of his students' voices anymore, at last. And as Mr. Tree loses all sensation, there is a brighter light, one that is at least lighter than the mists, and as Mr. Tree reaches and fades into that light, there is a great pull and a voice and Mr. Tree is being pulled away from that light and the voice says not so fast and now the one silent one one who is your backup character today <laughs> That was more intense than I thought it was going to be. Um, well, his name is Ezra Ferris, and he is a wizard. Okay. He's a human wizard. I, I, how else should I describe? Uh, as, as much as you want. Oh. I mean, you say that because I have like a whole paragraph of backstory. <laughs> okay, well, let's put it to this. Um, yeah. Like, question answer. What would Ezra Ferris be doing anywhere near Woods? Okay, so he works for a graveyard cemetery. It's like a family-run thing. And so he'd probably, because his family would sort of want him out of the way, mm -hmm. they'd probably just send him on a fetch quest to go get something uh, maybe like embalming fluid from a very specific vendor or. Okay. So embalming fluid, it's, uh, that's, 
there's plenty of, of vats of this at home. Like you have to keep this in large tanks, mm -hmm. but uh, got to top it off, I guess. And uh, as Ezra is is out, does, is Ezra one of the like dutiful about this or does he know that his family kind of treats him this way? And so he, is he going to do this task like kind of fast? No, they, he, know, he knows that it's sort of just to keep him busy because they don't want him to be a wizard. Mm -hmm. And they've sort of been pushing clerical, like you're going to be a cleric and it's going to be great on him. Oh, okay. All right. So it's, mm. so he's sort of just like, okay, you know, I'll just have to do this. Okay. Uh, as Ezra is kind of uh, getting through town, this is a town that he's, uh, is this town he's lived in his whole life? Yes. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, coming. His whole short life. Oh, of course. Uh, and even shorter. Coming up. The. There's a... <laughs> There's a very tan but very blonde young man that comes uh, up to Ezra and kind of puts an arm around him. It's like, hello, you look like you're in the need of a mystery, my friend. Yeah, yes, that sounds great. <laughs> I have just the thing. You see, I've picked up uh, just one of these things and I need to give it to a good, dear old friend. And, well, I've got another appointment to go on the way. And they've got quite the puzzle. They're working on something about uh, a mess of a garden, I suppose, or a bad dinner date, one of the two. I think that you are the pal to give it to them. Find the answer, and would you mind delivering this for me? I meant to do it, but I just can't. Uh, they're just round the bend over there. They're camping out in the woods, you see. And this blonde man hands Mr. Tree a Ezra. metal fan. It sounds, it sounds Ezra, a metal fan. <laughs> <laughs> Picked it up and meant to give it back. Borrowed it, you know, how these things go. Uh, you'll know my friend. Uh, she's uh, kind of a outdoorsy type. Okay. And uh, this man, blonde hair, will give you uh, vagueish enough directions that it seems like they might be at like a campground. Ezra has, I don't think, has ever gone camping before. Though there was that time when his family locked him out, and aha, that was very fun. But you know. When they didn't open up the doors the next morning, it was like not as fun. But it's at least something to do while the the fake errand of embalming fluid is letting us run. You know, when they send you out for embalming fluid, they mean like take, don't come back till like dinner. Yeah. So you've got a you've got a metal fan in your hand. It's a fan. It comes out, and you've got directions to uh, head into the woods. Well, this sounds like a great idea. You know, I trust this guy completely. Like, I like the sound of cut of your jib. And uh, he <laughs> slaps you on the back, says, I knew I could count on you. All right, see you back uh, sometime never, maybe. Goodbye. And um, this guy's must be on his way to or from somewhere. He's got rather colorful clothes. He's got a nice full backpack. Um, his shirt's a little torn, but, you know, who's to say uh, family life these days? Totally yeah. trustworthy. Okay, and so uh, go ahead and Ezra, roll some initiative. Oh yay! Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> I'll just do it here. Mm -hmm. I'll use the new dice, the Ezra dice. That's you know, that's not. Oh, it's you know, I get okay, okay, nine. All right, so that is actually above Torrin. So. <laughs> so here. All right. Um, that's where we go. Uh, so we had Cone of Cold, got Death Boys. Uh, Dantier, what are you doing up there? Uh, is there still one? There's the one in front of me is almost dead, correct? Oh, yeah, almost dead. And the one near Aya and Belkis, also almost dead. I'm going to attack the one in front of me. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a 15, I believe? Yes, 15. Okay, okay. 
Uh, that's a good. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, that is going to be nine points of damage. Gosh. Uh, that one is then just stabbed to death. Okay. Okay, so in front of uh, Dantir and Torin, that is uh, a dead Edder cap, much like the yeah. other ones. Uh, I'll pull the sword out of it, turn to Torin. I figured if there was anything that could be done, I would need some backup. But I don't know if anything can be done. Okay. That's at this moment then coming in from, oh, let's say it's the east, uh, through like a very thick veil of spider web. Uh, there is a very, how old is Ezra? He is, let me double check, 23. Nice, a youngish, uh, certainly younger than the the brothers too. Uh, youngish, booky looking nerd and uh, coming through the underbrush and webbing and just looking more worse for wear. And in one hand, parting the webs and the other hand, I's got what looks like Sigrid's wind fan. Ezra, there is some really badly hurt looking elves on your right. There's some not as badly hurt looking half elves on your left. There's like a gross purple dude in the direct center. And uh, uh, you have never seen as many cobwebs this side of Troll Tide. And... Bless you. Sorry. Tight. Okay. What you want to do? Oh, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> what did I just walk into? Uh, does anything look specifically like this is danger? I mean, it, yeah, but is There's it like... There's a pile of dead bodies a little bit to your right. <laughs> He's used to that. <laughs> yeah. It's like a weird, you know, it could be like a weird bonfire ritual thing. Mm -hmm. But, okay. 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 It's like, Dantir, says the one of the elves. Is this another one of your friends you have brought home to play? Have you brought them to this realm of death? Not this one. <laughs> I don't know okay. if you believe that, Ezra. <laughs> you know? I don't know if Belkis believes it. I don't know if Torn believes it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it, and that's all that matters. <laughs> You know, I think he's probably just gonna stand there, sort of like confused and dumbfounded, like holding the fan, like and just. Someone said that they were looking for this. Mm -hmm. or, or is it one of y'all? I mean, you you gave me a he gave me a brief description mm -hmm. of what the person looked like, right? Yeah, he would be describing secret. Uh, okay. Completely. Okay. Well, then I don't see I don't see a matching description here. Nope, nope. These are all men, except for that one elf lady. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like a bunch of creepy crawlies and a purple creature thing mm -hmm. that Ezra might have read about. Sure. Uh, then in the middle of all of this, uh, you are at what had been a clearing, at least a break in the woods uh, against kind of a windbreak of a foothill. This is where the Vistani wagons of the Moslavaric family had stopped for the night in preparation for a wedding that was never to be. In the middle of Ezra appearing on the scene, Dantir and Torin at the edge of it, Aya and Belkis in the middle. Almost like a tumbleweed going by, there is a black carriage that rolls into the scene there is no one driving this carriage but it very expertly turns and stops and a door to it opens and it has a very plush and red velvet interior and Belkis says oh gods no 
has found you. And Torin, what you doing? I does does Dan Tier look like he's been physically abused, or does he look like he normally does? I look a little bit. No, I'm not it. in the yellow. <laughs> so you don't really look the worst for wear. I look like I may have been punched, you know, in the face a couple times, maybe. Okay. So he Looks will. Handsome. I'm going to use my my bonus action to whack at the last Edder Cap with my spiritual weapon. Okay. Uh, and that will be a 17 to hit. Oh, that definitely hits. Okay, it will take eight points of force damage. And I am screaming at Dantier. My eyes are glowing gold. One or two of them went down? You barely escaped? Did you even... Ah! Oh, where are they? Nice. Okay. And I will use my action to beat it that direction. I will leave Dantier there. Okay. So, my action to dash. Sure. The carriage closes its door, takes its layer action in Barovia to get in the path of Torrin, uh, such that Torrin, I'll need you to do a deck save real quick. Okie dokie. I'm not too great with those. 17? Oh, that's nice. Okay, so you stop short. And its wagon wheels do stop there in the dirt. Its opposite door, from where it had started, opens up. And this time, not only the door, but there is a small trestle of stairs that flops down and, like, crunk, crunks. And on the very top stair there is a wax sealed envelope and on the top of it in large personalized cursive writing it says Torin Forrester this place is full of some hot garbage um if i try to move either direction around the carriage what happens like if i try to do the stutter step like Oh, like if you move left or right related really yeah. to something? Um, it absolutely will follow you, but just like a half step behind. If you needed to dash once more, uh, it would be this time a contest of who's getting first. I'm more worried about my charges than the stupid invitation from creepy freaking, so I'm going to try to get around it. Nice. Uh, go ahead and do, instead of a dexterity save, uh, either an athletics or acrobatics for trying to dodge around this. Oh, they're both only plus one, so. All right. Uh... Twelve? Nice. Uh, that is well around with uh, how you dodge it, I think. Uh, like, you, you fake left, you fake right, and... Then you just, I think, just dive underneath. There's The wheels can only get you one way. And you just tumble right through, and you are past it, and heading in the direction of where Dantier has come from. Mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, for Hannah and Sigrid, uh, you're both not dead. And we'll get to you in a sec. Uh, where Aya and... Where Aya and Belkis are... Uh, they there's no longer any edder caps, and so they kind of walk their way, trudgingly, through the cobwebs, and down here they're heading directly for the black carriage, and Belkis only kind of mournfully looks at you down here and says, "It won't matter exactly where." your brother heads to. If your friends have any chances, they'll be at the castle. 
This is the way he works. He never lets things go until he's taken everything from you right in front of you. We'll see about that. And uh, they, Belkus is carrying uh, Aya and Aya holding Nimmel, and they seem to both have no idea what's going on, but I think we can get in the carriage. It d will be safe. Down here is no, he's heading straight after Torin. Okay. Uh, so the last you see of Belkus and Aya Glenmere is that they are getting into this black carriage, and it is closes up behind them, and it goes away. Okay. Yeah. Full blast after his brother. Okay. Uh, Torin, you coming uh, directly where Dantir had gotten out of. Uh, it wasn't too far. They had almost made it back to the camp. Uh, you see a really ruined site. This looks like the trees themselves have been uprooted. There's uh, quite a number of bushes that have been blasted over. And they're all heading in kind of this westward migration. Other trees have been knocked over. There's almost a couple of trees that are missing from here. There's just these gaping holes in the ground. Uh, at least two. What was... No. Um, so you're there at a scene of some past carnage. So none, none of, I don't see any of like the walking trees or the bushes anymore. It's just like a. There's a pretty clear path where they went, but there's none in the immediate area. Do I see any of my companions? Not on the floor. Not in the holes. There are no bodies here. Do I hear Dantier coming up behind me? Absolutely. I'm going to turn on him. Hey, Dantier, your brother's here. It's all right. He, I'm, Dantier is fully expecting something to be thrown at him. He used to be where, more trees. where are the fallen, Kendrick? The ones you couldn't save, the ones you left behind. Well, obviously they got taken by, and he's going to point at the holes. I'm sorry, would you rather have me stayed here and died with them? I would rather you have done something that didn't put yourself before others for once. If I had done anything, I would be dead. They... You don't know that. I know can you I even tell, me, that they, can you even tell me they were dead? Or did you run too quickly? I saw Sigrid and Mr. Tree stop moving. I feared for my life. Yes, I maybe have been a coward at that moment, but I would rather be an alive coward who might be able to do something about what happened to our friends than a dead one. Do something about what happened? If they're dead, what does it matter anymore? Someone needs to pay for all of this. <laughs> Someone... Did you ever think that if you had stayed, there wouldn't have been a price to pay? I'm going to start following the tracks. Following. Ezra, back at the spider house. <laughs> <laughs> the two elves, well, three elves, there was a kid elf, it turns out, they were holding on to. They got into this black carriage, and that kind of took off in a meandering way around that sort of foothill. And then when it got to the edge of it, where there was at least a break in the tree line, it went straight up the foothill and then over it. And then you think it went down, but like in a very, Ezra's a wizard, yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would have been similar in a way, You Ezra has never seen somebody put apply spider walk to like a carriage, but that's what you think has happened here so that was a magic carriage and that has not happened in town for like 
ever. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, and then those half elves seemed pretty upset and didn't want to go in the carriage, and they went that way a bit to the south. And there's still the pile of dead bodies over there. Um, there don't seem to be any enemies, though, or anyone malicious in this area. What does Ezra want to do? Um. Well, I guess first he, because he didn't, you know, he didn't leave his house with all of, you know, things that he might want. It's very true. And since there's like nobody around to really judge him, yep. he's going to casually go to one of the dead bodies and have his little dagger out and just like maybe fillet a bit of flesh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, expertly he's done this several times now <laughs> and just like pocket it, just like, you know. It's handy. There's several hands. Um, so what Ezra finds in this uh, pile of bodies, just kind of going around, you know, checking their pockets. It's, they're not, they can't take it with them. Uh, about 75 gold in Faerunian coin. There is a potion of cold resistance. And a leather satchel. And like well, when I say satchel, it's like one of those like men's briefcases sort of deal. And it bears the word uh, Moslaveric Trading Company. It's embossed in gold leaf underneath a brass clasp. And uh, it seems pretty nice uh, of the stuff that they carry with them. Amongst, you know, uh, you think maybe like one of these guys' clothes can fit you if you, I mean, they, again, they can't take it with them. Also, would have been ruined, just left out here in the mist. It seems to be everywhere. Um, yeah, it'd be practical. Yeah. Have some backup clothes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you've at least got that. So you've got the coins, potion, leather satchel. Uh, and which direction do you... So go after this. Did I get a good enough look at the the two elvish characters that ran off in a huff? You got like a, a like like what they might have been wearing. Oh yeah, they were definitely wearing. Uh, what would you guys be wearing? I want to say that you just came off the mountain the other day. Uh, so I'd probably still be wearing what was it, paisley pink lady's jacket yes yes um and i don't remember what Torin had uh Torin definitely had uh, on what, whatever the winter dress Torin definitely had a symbol of kelimvor around his neck usually you see these being as gold plated this one was silver plated or <laughs> at least silver just one of those big balances yeah uh you're familiar with kelimvor because as a necromancer you uh, those clerics of death are yeah they come around every so often you know actually it's funny because that's exactly who runs the cemetery and who he's supposed to be a cleric to <laughs> thanks okay so are you following oh, the, the, uh, the cool thing that you saw like spider climb out or are you following the probably people who are f at least familiar with things that you know yeah because he, he's just like, oh, I know that symbol. It's probably safer. Okay. I think it would be cool to go after that thing, but first, follow what you know. All right. Uh, then... <laughs> do we do this? Uh, Dantier and Torrent, do you want to do this the easy way or the hard way? I want... How... How long before Torin realizes that chasing after this is futile? Like, oh no, oh no! Within minutes, the path of the tree, the horror trees, uh, is very clear, and it gets increasingly deep into the valley portion of Barovia, wherein you are now out of the Svalik woods and before you on kind of a bluff are the outer walls 
of Castle Ravenloft. And the path of whatever came through here is making dredging marks in the valley floor itself and appears to have dragged it's like if somebody had taken a vehicle half buried it in the ground and then just pulled it along through until there are these great iron portcullis and gates that are currently open and continue dragging that vehicle through the floor all the way up to the main gate the main doors of this castle wherein the sky is currently a bit dark and there's a great amount of dirt and mud uh, that's been dragged up onto the castle flagstones <laughs> there is also now that you are seeing it there is a carriage black that has just turned around the corner swings expertly through that same gate trundles towards the front of this castle and parks itself outside uh, down here you see the similar things and in the moments where Torin is considering uh, Ezra, you have come across them at that same scene. Uh, there is a peal of thunder. Torrin's just sort of standing at the gate, like shoulders slack, staring at the castle. Andrew's about like two, three feet behind him. <laughs> okay. Not saying anything. Looking and up at the castle. The main castle doors appear like they have opened now. Only the slightest is still a good distance in front of you from the gate. Uh, Dantir and Torin, you can see three figures come out of the carriage. Uh, it's definitely um, the man who says he's your father, Aya and Nimmel. And they're greeted by someone else who has about the same complexion as Belkis Cthulian. And there is no, there's no friendliness between this, but they're too far away to see other than just body language. But there's a stiffness to the greeting. And while this person stands outside, Aya and Belkis and Nimmel, our walk inside. Does the person look at all familiar? Hmm. Uh, he wouldn't be someone. Actually, uh, roll me either perception or history. Okay. Uh, perception is a little bit higher. Uh, so that is going to be a 15. Nice. Okay. You are looking at across a great lawn mm -hmm. to a great castle that seems to have not been built in hodgepodge manner, but there is great towers of it, and then maybe a chapel off the right of it. It doesn't look particularly balanced, but it is great in its way. And the person who is standing there at the door is in rich clothes, has the ears of an elf, and has the same shade of it as the man who claimed to be your father. But in his eyes, in those piercing eyes that look into your own Dantir, you see only contempt. And you would have remembered this person because they are looking at you like you are the worst thing in the world. And they retreat back into the castle and you see the door closes. Punch. 
Well, Aya and her ward are not going to be left in the charge of my not dead dad. I will turn around to look at Dantir and we are going in there. You will keep your mouth shut. Yes. And okay. you will follow my lead. And then I see Ezra. <laughs> Just going <laughs> behind. Maybe coins jangling in the pockets. New coat. <laughs> Where did you get that fan? Blue scarf. <laughs> uh, uh, so this guy, I was, I was sort of like going to do a thing. And then he was like, hey, you want to do me a favor? And I was like, yeah, you know, because... It's, I was bored, so. And he was like, take this fan and give it to this woman who looks like this. And um, I'd sort of... I like to imagine Ezra has drawn. Yeah. <laughs> like, really poorly. <laughs> in, like, in, like, in, like, my um, uh, part of my just parchment paper, loose parchment. Uh, are you, would, you give, would you be giving us, like, a description? Yeah. Would we recognize that as secret? Uh, give me a performance check, Ezra. Woo! <laughs> okay. Performance. 17. All nice. right. Uh, it sounds like secret. Uh, you don't think this, maybe this is somebody that secret knows. What is your name? Right. Okay. So my name is Ezra Ferris. You know, you okay. might have Ezra? heard of Ferris. Family. Ezra. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is not a safe place. I mean, it Probably seems good. okay. This is not a safe place. I could try and go back, but... No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm collecting children. <laughs> you will... You will... I'm not leaving you. Did you come here with anyone? No. I'm going to give you the same instructions I gave my brother. Okay. You're going into the castle. You are not to say a word, and you will follow my lead. I'm sorry you got roped up in this. I'm very used to this whole thing that's happening right now. You are both sorry. already forgetting rule number one. <laughs> we haven't gone inside yet. You didn't say we couldn't talk until we got inside. He's right. You have to be more specific. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Stunt, you're going to follow or lead? I'm following. Torin is leading. I will turn and walk up to the door and knock. Uh, very quickly, as if waiting for you to do this, the door opens. These great brass doors open. And an elf with brown skin and long black hair is there to greet you. He's wearing a gray cloak over black studded leather and hanging from his belt is a very polished scimitar. My master is expecting you. And he opens the door much wider, looks over at Dantir and Ezra and beckons you inward. There is a foyer here, an entryway of with flickering candles and torchlight. And ahead of you there's an arched hallway that stretches for a good twenty feet. You can see a spiral staircase where it ends. But as you walk in He's directing you past a suit of armor and double doors to it looks like a dining hall. There's organ music. Somebody's playing. It's sweet. And melodies of power and defeat roll into the hall. Um, Torn is side-eyeing the butler like the entire time do i get the sense that he like knows how to use that weapon or is it just ceremonial like for show oh give me an insight check dun, dun, dun. Uh, 
15. Okay. The way that he carries himself, you think that not only does he know how to use that weapon, he doesn't seem to be reacting anything to Ezra, like he's almost ignoring that Ezra is even there. But there is this... Every word that he's said has had the correct politeness. But also every word that he has said to you and Dantir, there is this edge to it. As if he would like nothing more than to drop you off of a cliff. <laughs> you have never met this person before in your life. This is the same person that yes, I've this is seen? The same, absolutely the oh, yeah. same person yes. that you'd seen. <laughs> Soren will sort of... Um... He's not good with words. Fudge. Um, if only there was someone who was. So you get to see there's as he's leading you through this kind of mm -hmm. foyer, the one with the big spiral at the and the staircase at the left. There's uh, a lot of gargoyles up at the top. They look kind of gross. Uh, they're all in various forms of like uh, picking their nose or they're looking prime, but uh, that's one of those things. There's somebody in here. Has a real creepy sense of design. Uh, and as you're led into the uh... like multiple times, Torn will just will be like, <laughs> "It's just a short trip. It's like <laughs> sixty feet." <laughs> but no, he's probably done that at least five times. Oh, sure. Like he like, like he feels like he should be saying something, something impressive or something to assert himself in the situation, and it's just. Okay. Uh, in this dining hall that you are led to, uh, there are three enormous crystal chandeliers, brilliantly illuminating with, mag uh, with magnificence. Uh, this chamber is very broad. There are pillars of stone standing against dull white marble walls and in the center of the room there is a long heavy table covered with fine white satin cloth and the table is laden with many delectable foods there's roasted beast based in a savory sauce you get roots and herbs of every taste sweet fruits and vegetables and places are set with fine, delicate china and gold, I would say silverware, but gold, goldware. Every fork and knife and spoon, either plated or solid gold. And at each place is a crystal goblet filled with an amber liquid with a delicate, tantalizing fragrance. And at the center, of the far west wall between floor to ceiling mirrors stands a massive organ facing away from you. No. Uh, it's pipes are blaring out a thunderous melody that speaks in tone of greatness and despair. And uh, as they're facing away from you, the organ player is seated, wearing black, red felt cape, pounding at those keys in raptured ecstasy. And as you all make it inside, the butler closes the doors behind you butler on the other side and the figure suddenly stops and as a deep silence falls over the dining hall it slowly turns towards you and it is a very handsome man of great bearing 
Uh, he seems to have that kind of noble look. He's got a nose of fine might. With a flick of his fingers, the lights in the dining hall get a little brighter, and you get to see that seated at the table already are, well, Belkis, Aya, Nimmel, and on the other side of the table, slumped in their seats, are the bodies of Sigrid and Hannah. Their belongings have, don't seem to be anywhere near uh, Hannah's precious thunder cannon is always been at her side, but not this day. Sigrid's axes and bags completely gone. It's just these two seated, and they are in a great quiet slumber, except Hannah, who's picked up this habit since grad school where when she is completely exhausted, she just snores in a way that the world could be dead. It's so true. Yeah, and it's it's been one of those days. I've been told that sometimes it's endearing. She has been told sometimes <laughs> it's been endearing. Uh, the man from the organ walks over to the table, picks up the goblet closest to where Hannah lays slumbering and uh, picks it up and says, Welcome to Ravenloft. <laughs> and <laughs> we'll say that uh, that's where we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> so. Alright, I gotta pee. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay, everybody is here. And you, Sigrid and Hannah, you get the benefits of a long rest. Oh, oh, that's oh. nice. Well, what am I talking about? I didn't take any damage. <laughs> yeah, I did. You are missing, though, your uh, equipment for for the moment. Uh, so, yeah, we'll take a break. So about six minutes, I guess. That's 7.27, 7.30. Yeah. See you back in a bit. Wait, no.
can be. Uh, totally. There we go. Okay, so we are back then. <clears throat> Welcome to Castle Ravenloft. Belkus, you have been away too long. Not been able to hear my summons, was it? And you've brought guests. Uh, Belkus's face is just a line. And he is not looking at the person speaking. But he does have like an arm around Aya. And Aya has an arm around Nimmel, who's like kind of shaking uh, next to her. Uh, he's not looking really well. He's normally pale as an elf, uh, but he's uh, not looking at, at much else in this room. And uh, you think that there's some uh, blood dripping down his face from his right eye, uh, or what used to be one. It looks very badly pulled. Mm -hmm. uh, Hannah and Sigrid are there at the table as described. Uh, Hannah's uh, doing strap or something. <laughs> 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 And I, yeah, <laughs> I hope you will excuse our tardiness. I lost my invitation. <laughs> but Torin, you have had your invitation since birth, since your father left us so many years ago. We have been waiting for you. Glaring at the thing that is my dad. Maybe. <laughs> Belkus, you did not tell them of our little agreement? Uh, to which Belkus still not looking at him. Torin, Dantir, don't talk to him. Don't agree to anything he says. Don't tell him anything. And he will look up at Dantir and Tor in this. And don't worry about anything he does to me. Oh, that is not a problem. Uh, he'll smile a little at that. The time in the outside world has not cured you of your impertinent tongue, has it? Rahadin! And the door opens uh, once more, and that elf who had led you inside uh, is opened. Yes, my lord. Take these to more comfortable quarters. We have discussions to be made with the young princes and their coterie. And Radin will uh, step in just a little past Ezra and put one hand to the shoulder of Belkis and Belkis will smack it away but the hand comes up again and grips rather tightly on Belkis's shoulder and whispers something and, and then Belkis is not smacking the hand away anymore and Rahadin leads out of the dining hall and Valkus is still holding to the hand of Aya and her to Nimmel and so the three of them as Nimmel passes Torin will try to try to reach out and just touch him gently on the shoulder and use his his healing hands to give him three hit points back at the very least to try to stop the bleeding in his eye okay uh, Nimmel looks up at Torin, and uh, it looks like the eye has been completely gouged out. Uh, there's like a... There's somebody has taken a very th wide knife, and or a spoon, or something pointed but, bl but wide, and uh, has carved it across. Uh, but as Torin lays healing hands upon him, the bleeding stops and the wound kind of knits together. 
and he has back kind of like an uh, an eyelid on it and there is some light in his eyes still and he looks at Torin and uh, looks back down and is led away by Aya. Uh, and then the doors close behind. Perhaps we should have discussions with all members present. Yes, and with another flick of fingers, there is a loud peal of thunder for a good five seconds. One crashing after another, after another, another, and another. And though the rest has been not so long, the entrancement is now complete. And Sigrid and Hannah, you are now wide awake, seated at a luxuriously laden table. Gold wares all about you. A very young looking gentleman standing uh, to your sides and Torin and Dantir in the same room and some uh, kid <laughs> who's I had this... does Ezra wear glasses all right yes some kid with nerd glasses <laughs> I had the strangest dream and you were there and you were there and you were there uh, what's Hannah's favorite there? like that Thanksgiving time meat and potatoes cut sort of dish. Um, stuffing. Okay, there is uh, been there's a bl an empty china plate in front of Hannah. There's that goblet of amber liquid that it smells just slightly sweet and warm. And uh, to the right of Hannah's place, there is that roast beast. And in front, there's just this. Almost, uh, it's a very, I would say tin tray, but it is fl almost flaking gold the way that this soft metal holds this pile of stuffing. <laughs> mm, stuffing. And Sigrid, you wake as well and see Hannah in front and your hand goes immediately to where your weapons should be in this strange place. And there is nothing. Your belts have been removed. Your armor is mostly here. And you... There's a lot of equipment missing. And you feel for the, the letter that you have held onto for so long. And that is at least still in its secret place. Uh, but otherwise, you are fairly unarmed. And Hannah, you also notice at this point, uh, having taken sample of maybe some of the delights that are here, the your bag is uh, is not next to you. This is like when you wake up at the library that maybe you've taken a, a, a quick rest at, rest your eyes, and... Uh, Your bag's not where you left it. Your, and that's when it hits you. Like all oh, your stuff was in there. Like all my stuff. Yeah, uh, everything except the clothes that you were carrying and things that you might have had in your pockets. Uh, like you had, like at, at the very least, some uh, a handful of your s special silvered ammunition in your pockets, just for luck, and to like roll something around in your fingers. But is that still that's still in my pockets? You have five silvered ammunition in your pocket. Okay. Your thunder cannon is nowhere to be found, though. Okay. Uh, and so you are here. Uh, Ezra, what you doing? I have no fucking idea what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> but he's being very good and just has his finger to his mouth. But he looks like he really wants to say something. Okay. He's just like... <laughs> Young lads, please That's come awesome. join Tar us. Torin, Kendrick, sit, eat. Um, 
Torin will move to take a seat and we'll look at Strahd and say, um, do we have you to thank for assisting our friends when they had fallen and her, his gaze sort of turns towards Dantier asleep? They had come down with a terrible case of blight in that section of the Svalic woods. It was everything I could do in order to save them from a terrible fate. I was unfortunately not able to save them all, and my servants brought the survivors here to Ravenloft. Your companion, the Mr. Tree, as the villagers call him, he did not make it. He was a brave fellow and did his kind good service. Your companions are stalwart and brave and have helped you come through several trials already. You have faced werewolves in the mist and to his left and in front of you there is an illusion of a large white wolf that rears back on its hind legs and there is a wide red cut with blood coming off of it. I wondered what you would do when faced with a difficult path. Would it be a merciful choice or one of citizen safety? And that wolf is now standing on its hind legs and it's now slowly transforming into a more human shape. But before it goes all the way with a wave of his hand, it disappears. When you actually found someone within Barovia who was putting its citizens at risk, and with another wave, you now see Glovia in her clothes and in a, a healthier fashion than when you had seen her last. You did what you could in order to mitigate the harm done to all, and you even brought justice for the village of Arashnel, my little mark upon Mount Baratok. And with another wave, Glovia vanishes. When you came upon my great servants, <coughs> the Moslavariks and the Bogorovs of the Vistani, you did them good turns as well, and I thank you and your companions. Mistress Sigrid, Hannah, you did fine work, honorable as it was to put an end to the disruption to the Vistani's traditions. No Vistani should court a mortu. This is their way. And you set it right. All of these trials. And you have made such wonderful decisions. You are set to be my heirs to Barovia. Something I have wished for at long last to pass. And these 
Consider, rulers must have a royal court. Servants who will do their strongest and best to serve you and serve justice upon this valley. I feel like I may soon be able to pass peacefully and with blessings upon this land, knowing it is in such capable hands of your own. How is Dantir taking this? He is still standing. Um, so not seated, not taking it. He has moved up when Torin went to sit. He moved up pretty much standing behind the chair. Um, no expression on his face the whole time. Hmm. Has but, he taken off his hat? <laughs> no, hat's <gasps> still on. Oh, it's rude. Um, he hasn't sat down yet. Okay. I mean, if he sits down, he's taking off the hat. You're inside. True. It's a nice hat. Um, but he is scanning the room, oh. taking in everything that he can. Give me a quick perception check. Okay. okay that is going to be a 19. Oh, it's a super fancy room. It is... Hmm. Uh, it is lit up with those uh, sconces up at the top, all a kindle and fire, and just taken from a standing glance where the doors were. Otherwise, everything is very nice and, and white marble. Where Strahd is standing, though, against the organ, it's the only place with any marrings to anything there are a couple of scrapes and scratch marks on the floor near where the organs left side is like almost like in an arc leading out from uh -huh. that side. uh is there sheet music on the organ yes okay that is important okay uh how's secret uh, at this point Sigrid's shaking, I think. She's she's terrified. She doesn't have any weapons. She's she, all she remembers is a hell of a lot of pain and just everything. She's terrified. She's just sitting there shaking. Mm -hmm. There's like the gold knife and spoon and fork and soup spoon and salad fork and crystal mm -hmm. goblets. Any of them of interest? Is any food? Food? No. She'll probably pick up whatever looks like the sharpest knife. There's, rather than a, there's that. a gold stick knife. Yeah, she'll probably pick that up and just, just hold it. Not in a threatening way. Or just because kind of, you'll know, grab it and lay it in her lap, clutched tightly in her hand. Mm -hmm. But other than that, she's just shaking and just kind of like terrified. <laughs> Torin, why have you not visited us here in Barovia before? Surely your father let you know of your princely kingdom to come? Well, first of all, Torin's very upset because Strahd named two of what he considers his greatest failures as good things. <laughs> so he's not buying this at all. It is obviously that their their eyes don't light up. Um and he will sort of, um, he doesn't, he, it's not, it's not, it's conscious, so it's not obvious, but um, the the holy symbol of Kelimavor, um, it kind of, he kind of subconsciously reaches for it before putting his hand back down on the table and he has taken a seat because that's just, that's just polite. Um, and he will say, "I, you, my, my apologies, but my ignorance, I think, is what kept me away, and my education has given me a different kingdom." Hmm. What kingdom would that be? 
and he seems to be looking down now and uh, wiping almost his hands of his music off on his vest and then patting and looking for something. Uh, one in which I can rest peacefully. <laughs> Peaceful rest. That. My dear Torin. That is the one thing you will never have. Let that be the real lesson, possibly final, that you receive from your father. And he will reach into his jacket pocket and pull out a gold watch. You have three hours. Your next trial is to survive. Three hours from Ravenloft to anywhere <coughs> you might think safe. Then the hunt will begin. Survive. Thrive. Conquer. This is how you or your brother will prove which is to be the true ruler of Barovia. There will be only one upon its throne. Highlander. <laughs> And to Ezra, Hannah, and Sigrid, Count Strahd von Zedovic looks on and says, Hannah's busy eating. Yeah. No, no! <laughs> Choose which you will follow. The time will come when you must leave the other behind. Or die. It comes soon. And he clicks his watch and vanishes in a pluff of smoke. There is a nunder thunder crash as it goes. And the lights go very dim. <laughs> and there is now a three hour timer, a ticking sound coming from somewhere. There is a clock with a very loud second hand from somewhere. And at this time, if everyone could go ahead and roll for initiative. <laughs> oh, I don't do well under pressure. Oh my goodness gracious. Hang on, I have to find my thing. Oh, yeah. oh no, I did okay. Oh. Okay, okay. Double digits and initiative. 17. <laughs> got Torin as 13. I got Ezra as 10. Oh. <laughs> 23. Dantir as 23. And Hannah as 17. Okay, Dantir, you are the first one to have any movement. Okay. Um... There doesn't seem to be a vampire lord in the room. <laughs> Does it <anymore>. seem? <laughs> um, hey, uh, I'm going to the door. Okay. Uh, the door is unlocked. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very nice and ornate. And uh, in front of you, there is, uh, like I said, uh, just torchlight fluttering from the halls around. It should be pretty easy to see things. Uh, to the east of you, it stretches on about 20 feet that's where you see a spiral staircase that goes both up and down there's a left and a right passage there there's a suit of armor nearby and to the to the left there's that 
kind of center foyer where you and and Torin and Ezra had come through, the one with the, the gargoyles up there. And your perception is, it doesn't have to be super great to see that those gargoyles are now all moving and they are kind of opening and closing their mouths at each other and they're it's almost like they're talking or laughing or doing something it sounds like a lot of uh like rocks coming uh, uh boulders falling that kind of thing uh i will turn to the group out the front door uh there's a clock ticking somewhere mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I will at least step out of the room. Mm -hmm. uh, do I see our butler friend around? Nope. Doesn't okay. be any else in the hallway. Um, and I am going to start making my way towards the exit. Okay, back where we came. Um, Hannah, what are you doing? Yes. Uh, is no one else eating? No one else is eating for some reason. Guys, this food's really good. No, no one? Nothing? Alright, she's gonna keep eating. <laughs> Seriously? You have gotten all the stuffing. I just almost died. I am hungry. It does put, like, this... Not only a hunger, but a thirst. And, uh, it's that crystal goblet there. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna have that, too. Ooh, it is what like ambrosia. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's fair. Uh, let's see. That's good eating. Uh, mm -hmm. Torin, how about you? Um, are Hannah and Sigrid's stuff still missing? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Who had the map? We had a map? I thought you had it. We had a map. I thought Torin had it. Did I keep it? I don't remember. Because we I'd got it from it the first gen. Either you or me. We got it from the general store. We asked him for a map. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Torin. I will. Say I have it a map. <laughs> um, I will take the map out and lay it on the corner of the table. I have stood up, mm -hmm. and um, the first thing we need to do is decide where we are going. I will not be running around without purpose. If this is the task he has set for us, it's ridiculous, but I don't doubt that the hunt will come. Mm -hmm. And I will start looking for any place anyone has mentioned to us before. Sure. Uh, you have, from the time that you had to rescue uh, lads who were on their way back, uh, you remember <coughs> that there was a village named Velaki they had gone with in the west to trade mm. uh, you have heard of a village of Barovia from the Vistani uh, like little Barovia like oh the town of Virginia in the land of Minnesota <laughs> just has a name that sounds like the name of a bigger it's place. like New York New York there you go so Barovia Barovia uh, on the map there is like a very small set of buildings for the village of Barovia in the southeast of the valley for the town of Velaki. It's kind of at the center north and near a large lake that's marked on the map as Lake Zadovich. And there's these little pontifications around the town of Velaki that looks like they it's, it makes some sort of barrier. Uh, and there are markings that look like gates at the the north west and east of that town and which those, those are at least ones which location between barovia and the village of barovia and Velaki looks like it has like according to the map the least forest like where things can hide and sneak up on us oh, the least forest yes okay. hmm. from where you are which I feel like on the map is marked as castle ravenloft Mm -hmm. Barovia is nearby and though there is forest between you and it there's the least amount of forest there 
Velaki is surrounded by forest on all west and east and south sides. The north is bordered by a lake. And the very westmost village that looks like someone has marked down as Kresk is completely surrounded by forest. Ugh. We could go back to the town that we came from. There's a rationale in the mountains. I feel like he would expect us to do that, though. Um, I will randomly point at the village of Barovia and say, this is, this is where we need to go. No, you don't. Uh, Ezra, Very well. this, this entire map looks weird. Okay, so he's going to like slowly like sidestep towards Sigrid and just like, <laughs> like, just like, because he still has the metal fan in his hand. She looks just like you're drawing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just going to, just going to, like, he's going to, he's, he's going to turn his uh, finger over his mouth into his hand and like, like side glance at Torin and just be like, I was told to give this to you. This is for you. It's yours. It is the very same cursed wing fan. It's at least one and it can thing. Be, and it can be used like a short sword too, can it? That is correct. Okay, good. I'll just take it and say thank you. <laughs> Poor Ezra. Oh my god. My Time job here is done. <laughs> Time, to no go. <laughs> Time to go. Time to go. Alright, secret. Uh, there's no, there's definitely no trunks or anything around that could indicate where my gear is. In this, you give me a perception check or investigation if you want to turn over a few things, the chairs, the table, the heavy table. Yeah, she's not, she's not uh, doing too well, so, mm -hmm. um, let's see. Another perception. Uh, only a nine. I got sure. nothing. Uh, a little panicked. Uh, Sigrid is turning the room over, uh, with her eyes looking out the doors that Dantir has already, like, gone out through. Uh, none of this looks familiar. You last were in the handles of a tree blight in the woods. And this is inside a castle. It sounds like it's dark and stormy outside. The light is dim. You can't see much. And you can't even, usually the smell of woods and wilderness is at least calming because it smells ever so slightly of home. Here you only smell age and dust. And although Hannah is chomping down on a lot of food, yep. there's nothing of its richness that is even familiar to you except uh, perhaps some of the vegetables and the roast beast. Okay. Um, also, when they took the gear, Sigurd has a, like, a, um, not like a cloak, but like a wrap with fur on the back of it. Um, it, it wasn't armor or anything like that. Would they have taken that or is he just in like basic clothing? No, you would still have your wrap. Okay. Um, shit. If there would have been anything hidden inside that or upon your person, those you would still have. Anything though that you would have carried as part of a bag or obvious weaponry that would have been taken. What about our armor? That they would not have removed. Okay. All right. Um, Whatever I'm gonna... it was. <laughs> All right. I'm going to look at Torn to say, fine, let's go. I, I need to leave. I have to get out of here. I, I need to leave. And I'll run out into the hall and I'll, I'll, I'll skin, take a look around to try to see my, where my swords is. My swords are. Sure. So you see the same hall that uh, Dantir's come out in and there are now at least four gargoyles from very high perches uh, looking down at you with what looks like malicious grins. Oh, hell. Uh, very close to it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess so I don't see anything. I don't see my stuff. Your stuff is not out here in the hallway. All right. Looks like um, a nice castle, maybe. I mean, it's a castle. Yeah. Um, 
How many doors are in this room? Uh, out here in the hall, there is to your east a set of spiral stairs that go up and down. Okay. North of you, there is this kind of great hall that almost like in a, a church or otherwise where the ceiling is vaulted. There are the eight gargoyles kind of seated around the ceiling. There are bronze doors to the left of those gargoyles and to the right of the gargoyles. And then straight ahead, maybe 80 feet straight, uh, there are a wide set of stairs uh, that just go north. I, I guess I ready my fan mm -hmm. and, uh, and go towards one of the bronze doors and just open them and just look in a bit just to try and see what's there. Oh, sure. Um, so I'll let you do that as uh, the gargoyles begin to sweep down uh, at you, uh, where there will be some uh, attacks here. I didn't realize they were flipping. Oh, yeah, that's a thing now. Uh, I so... didn't realize that. <laughs> uh, now Help. we know. And so where you open these bronze doors, they do open uh, rather handily. Uh, there are, uh, there's another set of doors here. It's kind of like a lobby foyer type of deal wherein, oh, it's a, a set of double doors, solid to the west. And overhead in that spot are four statues of dragons just glaring <coughs> down and their eyes are flickering in this torchlight which thank goodness there's light here uh, but that's when i'm going to have to do two attacks of gargoyles down on secret as they fly off their perch and they're they seem to be saying something but they are saying it in a way that sounds very much like uh, crashing rocks. What languages do the secret speak? I didn't realize it was muted. Um, she, spe she speaks common, dwarvish, and giant. Excellent. Okay. This sounds nothing like any of those. <laughs> uh, you have heard of gargoyles, though, from uh, tales around the fire. These are things that are terrible things. Cursed stone that moves and bites. And uh, as its claws come down. Uh, this is something that you... This was something that wasn't supposed to be here. This is something like from a story. And uh, I think since you still have your armor, a six is not going to do anything. <laughs> uh, from the <laughs> second that's come down here. Uh, how about a 15? Uh, nope, doesn't get me. Okay, good. If I still have my armor, it doesn't get me. Oh, yes, you still have your armor. Okay. Uh, so, Dantir, you do see that two of the gargoyles are the ones closest to where Sigrid has flung open a double set of bronze doors. Mm -hmm. uh, those have come down to uh, definitely attack her. And to where you are, the closest two gargoyles are looking all eyes on you. Okay. Um... Is this the way that we came in, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so okay. here it has opened up the doors that Rahadin had led you through. Okay. Um, I'm going to go uh, try to help out Sigrid. Okay. Go over here. Uh, so you got those doors there. Uh, okay. As you pass under these gargoyles, they are going to take wing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're coming near you. Mm -hmm. So these are two claws uh, that are slashing as they land nearby. Mm -hmm. 
Both of those, or just the 18 hits. Okay, so three slashing across your back. Um, right. But you can continue moving. Yep. Okay, so you then, see the same foyer. Sigrid sees there's those four dragon statues at the top, and you see those last set of outer doors. You know this from having come in. Those are the doors that go out. Um, I, I'm going to uh, take a swing at one of the gargoyles that is on Sigrid. Mm-hmm. That is going to be a 19 to hit. Nice, yes, definitely. And this is with my silvered rapier. That is going to be uh, eight points of damage. Okay. And I am going to uh, gesture towards the door out uh, and just let Sigrid know that that's the exit. Okay. It's like, that is the way out. Uh, the gargoyle that was uh, on nearest to Sigrid does take some damage from it, but as you might expect, striking its flesh that is living stone, mm -hmm. it doesn't cut as deep as you had... as a uh, flesh usually does. <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh, Hannah, you are eating. Two people uh... have left the room. They have left their plates... Is the butler still around? He's not in the room. He led away the elves from back before. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to do, like, a uh, Sigrid, like, a perception to see if I can find my stuff, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm feeling a little bit better than she is. Maybe I can I see, it, like, um, let's see. Nope. Same thing as her. <laughs> okay. Um, it's so much good food here. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, you don't have your stuff, but you do have anything that was on your person. You have that lucky ammo. Yep. Uh, and there's, of course, the... Oh, secret, you, so you have the wind fan, but you also have that gold steak knife, so that'll count as a dagger. Um, I will also pick up another a, a steak knife of some sort. Okay. Um, I will shove some... There are some... technically eight place settings, and secret only took one of the knives. <laughs> okay, good. I have another knife. Um... I will shove some rolls and some meat into my pockets. Okay. And I will follow them out the door. Mm -hmm. uh, Torin, of course, you were seated, so you get to see Hannah, like, get up, uh, put all this stuff in her pockets, take one more knife. Like, she has her knife, and then she takes an extra one. Uh, and then she goes out the door. Uh, Hannah, you do see that uh, Dantir and Secret have kind of gone down the hall. There's, like, torches lighting the way, and there's definitely, like, living statues uh, attacking them. They don't look nice. Ooh. That's a thing. Uh, Tor, yeah, that is a thing. What you doing? I am folding the map back up. <laughs> taking a very deep breath. I will look at Ezra and say, I am sorry you got pulled into this. But oh, you've heard it from both brothers. <laughs> but let's go. And I will, I will move to leave, but I'm not going to leave Ezra behind. It's going to be like, sort of like a hovering over this <laughs> poor small child <laughs> that has been drawn into this terrible thing. Can you uh, grab that plate of stuffing on your way out? <laughs> no! And, I, and then Hannah has me so flustered, I will say, I will just loudly announce to the room like a crazy person because I think I'm losing it. A true host would return his guest's property and then move further out. Uh, Ezra, you have been uh, a victim of forced movement. You are now out in the hallway. <laughs> unless you want to resist. Um, you have all your collected things that <laughs> um, they barely have any bad smell to them at all. And yeah. you know what? Ezra might have more of a embalming fluid smell to himself it's just one of those things. but uh there's a hallway there's certainly a dining room full of what looked like good food that everybody's leaving behind and uh maybe living statues out here that have talons and and wings and things stairs to your right stairs to the north and but two of the people who were in here are trying to get out some doors uh down that north way what you doing oh those gargoyles are so cool! 
Okay. Oh crap. I'm gonna see if any of these spells are I think all of them are verbal, so I'm gonna have to break Torn's rule. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so I, I sort of, like, I can see that uh, the gargoyle is, like, gaining up on somebody. Oh, yeah, it's, like, going on all fours. It's behind Dantir, and it's, like, reaching back, and it's... Uh, one of them has clearly uh, scratched him in the back. Okay. Okay. So then I'm just gonna, like... Uh, uh, or, or gonna just, like, like, rub my hands and then start trying to do... Um, I'm just gonna cast Chill Touch on... Or I'm gonna try, yeah, try and cast Chill Touch on uh, on one of the gargoyles because a skeletal hand in the space of the creature within range. Oh, spooky! <laughs> but I have to, I have to actually hit it though. So sure. We'll see how that goes. Okay, okay, plus five, eighteen. Nice, yes, special. A skeletal <laughs> hand shows up on the shoulder of this gargoyle. Cause it's like this is I can get I can't get close enough to examine it, but I you know, but that's um I haven't ever done this spell. <gasps> okay, that's it's eight necrotic damage. Oh dang! Okay, uh, part of it turns to black stone and uh, crumbles away off of its shoulder. And it can't regain hit points until the start of my next turn. Oh my! Okay. Uh, it turns and this part has like crumbled away. It's like still physically on the floor, just blackened. It almost like from soot. Okay. Um, let me get it out there in the hall. Was was that some verbal part? Yeah, I had to. I had to. I had to do some verbal. What, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I I do the spell and then I look at look at Torin and just be like, I had to do it. Torin, you know what, what Ezra's talking about, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. He tried his best. <laughs> <laughs> I tried my best. All right. Uh, Secret Dantir is at your back. He's warding off two gargoyles. You've got this steak knife. You've got a door in front of you. Uh, what you doing? You're muted. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Um, huh. All right, well, if... So Dentier told me that's the way out, so... No, I'm not going to run. I'm going to turn around and um, try and hit the closest gargoyle. Do with that information okay. what you will. Uh, she, <laughs> she did. Okay. What she hit me. What you and, with? Uh, I'm gonna go with the. Sorry, I'm using a laptop here. It's the first time I've tried all this with a laptop, so I'm a little bit. Um. I'm just gonna use my existing short sword set up here just to roll it. Sure. Secret yeah. used fan attack. Yes. Because <laughs> I don't have a put in this. Ah, uh, come here, you. Work. Oh, um, nice. Ooh, oh, nice. yeah. All right. So, hit that, and can I use my bonus action to use the dagger to hit it again? Yeah, I think so. Let's you can try it. that? Okay. Um, let's see. The dagger is 1d6, right? Uh, 1d4. 1d4? Okay, I don't have anything that's 1d4. We'll just do something and then subtract here. Plus... Let's see. Dantir in front, where you see Secret, like, swipe with this metal tine fan. Uh, there are four jagged claw marks across the chest of this uh, gargoyle. Like, they went deep. Good. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> So I definitely hit that one at least. Oh yeah. Okay. It, and... it goes in and it goes in deep and like this is this is stone but clearly living stone. It has with you push enough, it goes in. 
uh, the gold steak knife comes out with like a slightly blunted tip. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, gold plated at least. Let's see. That's... I got six damage. From nice. That one. Okay. Uh, that gargoyle looks like it's got like some wounds on it. There's certainly no blood coming out of it, and it's otherwise very mobile. Uh, it's at this point. Let's have uh, some more gargoyles join the party. Uh, this party. Why? On Hannah and on Torin. Oh, and there's. Fun. They have other things to do. Obviously, I mean, come on. They they heard you have stuffing. Yeah. No, they didn't bring the stuffing out. I don't have now, the that. Stuffing. They found out you didn't, and now they're upset. That's oh. how it works. So now that you're all out in the hall, uh, they can have all the fun that they want. This is uh, uh, gargoyle what? multi-attack time. Oh dear. So good stuff. On uh, let's go with Hannah on the sides. So this is two claws. It's a nine. Yep, that hits. And a one. That does not hit. So slashing, and then one just it just is going. Maybe for the meat that's in your pocket, but otherwise it does bite at your <laughs> side. And it misses. Good. Okay. And then for Ezra, uh, another gargoyle comes down. Uh, these are two claws, a 13 and a 15. He's going to scream and, and do another spell and do shields. So only the 15 hits. Nice. Okay. So five slashing and then... Uh, that oh, means... wait, actually, no, wait, because it's 12 plus... Oh, no, they both don't hit. Okay, that's what I thought. Because it adds five. Okay. Should be good. Okay, so you scream. There's this multicolored, uh, almost solid glass wall pops up, and as the gargoyle is biting down onto your shoulder, it, like, hits this glass, and that's not working. And the <gasps> third gargoyle over here is going to go for Torin, with uh, a 21 and a 13 on its claws. The 21 will hit. Okay, so four slashing on that, and its bite is a 10. I think that's all right. Yeah, that won't hit me. Okay, and so we've got those ones on you, on Dantir. Uh, the ones closest are not in a good shape, but uh, coming down from... I was going to say the nearest... Yeah. The nearest walls are two fresh gargoyles that kind of uh, alight upon one of the pillars and they kind of like dig their claws into the side of it and climb down it as if in as if gravity was one way and they just didn't care in which way it, it came and so versus you there are going to be four claws uh so a seven a 14 uh 19 uh that's for six slashing hey uh, Dantier's down. Okay. Uh, then I'm not going to bite on the other ones. And so, Sigrid, you hear a body slump to the floor behind you. And it's all you can do to look at where Dantier is when uh, the gargoyles come for you. With a 16. 8. 8. And a 12. <laughs> Do any of those hit? No way. I want to have it noticed, but some of these things are out of space. Oh, sorry, Sigrid, you're on mute. Mm. We lose Hannah? Yes. Yeah, yeah her, her, laptop her laptop overheated. She'll, she'll be back in just a second. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just, I switch screens so sorry about that uh, what's, huh. what's your ac mm -hmm. sacred oh yeah did the 16 hit yes it uh, it would have hit a met meets okay three slashing damage and there's a set of doors ahead of you dantier went down and then i'm going to say that uh it's Dan, to your turn. You get to do your first death save. Ooh. Uh, that's a 19. Nice. So that's one plus. Uh, Dantier is dying just that other way. Uh, Torn would have seen that happen. Everybody would have seen it happen. And, Great. Uh, that's almost I'm bad. mean to him and then he dies. Yes. I'm back. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. So that's how it happens. <laughs> 
Sometimes they're directly related. Not this time, though. Gargoyles. A lot of gargoyles. Okay, I think I put everybody back in their places. Uh, Adam, <laughs> what are you doing? All right, you so do? I'm going to attack the gargoyle that's next to me with my steak nice. knife. Of, steak knife. It's like my steak knife of like wounding, so it does an extra. <laughs> Plus five. No, it's like does an extra d20 of damage. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Does this is this just like a dagger? I don't oh, think yeah. I put a dagger mm -hmm. on my thing. So I'm just going to roll a regular d20. That would work. Okay. And then add whatever your strength modifier is for that. Or dex. Either one works. Okay, hang on. Which one is more? Hang on. It's probably going to be your dex. <laughs> yes. So it's a... Um, it. It's a 14 to hit. Oh, so your uh, dagger of wounding, this gold... Yes plated steak knife just goes yep. and makes that sound of like a nail <laughs> on a chalkboard just went oh, as it slides off the side of the gargoyle's face does the sound do psychic damage um to yourself damn it brings back, <laughs> brings back memories of that one professor who used chalkboards when everybody else was already using uh rune magic to like not even <laughs> mark uh just this one you could barely understand what he <laughs> said and just would like would use them till they were the nubs um you are depressed and damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i am depressed all right and i'm gonna try and where is the door is it right in front of hang on i gotta scroll up on this thing oh sure what door are we trying to go to i don't think hannah ever noticed that Oh, so everybody seems to be uh, near you. You've got Ezra and Torin, and then right. to the north of you, uh, very close by, like twenty feet northwest, slightly. Like if you look straight ahead, and then a little bit to your left, there'd right. be Dantir's body on the floor. And okay. Then ahead of him, you saw that Sigrid had like flung open a set of doors, and uh -huh. is uh, stabbing a gargoyle. All right, and if I rush past all of those, they all get... Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, wait, I have Expeditious Retreat. What does that do? So that lets you do, a, a, like, a special dash. So I can, like, retreat out the door? Yeah, that's one of those things. Nice. Okay, I'm going to do that. Um... Yes. Oh, that doesn't like they can still get attacks on me but you know what we're gonna die anyway i'm going for it yeah so this is a bonus action <laughs> so yep. you get to do a dash as a bonus all right i'm action. gonna i'm gonna dash um out the door that secret just opened okay uh so you get that dash what's your regular speed 30. okay so yeah dashing uh gets you there to the like there's a there's a final set of bronze doors out here okay and uh, as you step into this short foyer that looks like there's been like mud and something dragged onto here, like this is a place where people have uh, brought in their boots or otherwise, uh, as you get in, there are four roars. And so above you, in a very similar gargoyle fashion, uh, there are four little dragon statues. Oops. And they have uh, transformed. They have come to colorful life Oops. as uh, they roar and breathe. Uh, but you still have your movement left. And like, as you see this and you're like, whoops, uh, you just push open that last door. <laughs> yeah, and so, I keep going. <laughs> yeah, and so you've got your regular movement there. And so uh, these dragons are roaring. Uh, but Hannah is uh, home free in the way that they say. <laughs> as... Uh, Hannah is, is is just another 30 feet out that door. And so, Hannah, you're in like a stone courtyard. And you okay. can see ahead of you, there is a... Uh, but it's just a short bit of freedom away. There's like within 40 feet across this courtyard, there's another, like a large gate with a portcullis. The portcullis is down, but uh, the gate's only, what, like 20 feet tall? 
probably. Okay. You'll be fine. I uh, can climb that. Behind you, there's a bunch of roaring happening. <laughs> so let me just... Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, could I have closed the doors behind me? Oh, absolutely. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> and just walk past. Uh, <laughs> saunter out. And so I'm just going to roll initiatives for these red dragon wormlings. <laughs> what? <laughs> As you do. Why is that baby dog? Uh, oh. One of you is getting out of this well fed and well rested. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Torin. Steps out. Uh, yeah, oh! yeah, just peace. <laughs> uh, in his room, huh. started saying, it's like, maybe I should have given the princedom to another. <laughs> Torin, you and Ezra, uh, two, three ish gargoyles, the one that passed, uh, that Hannah passed by, or the kind of flapping in the air. Right. They seem um, to be settling themselves on these stone plinths uh, around. Um, you definitely, you've heard it so many times before, as you've had to like find him and uh, suss him too. But you heard the distinct noise of down tier collapsing. Great. <laughs> you just know it's happening um, close by. You have this sixth sense. I will. I'm gonna sort of parse my movement into two steps. I am. I am irate. So I'm going to um, sort of move forward and put myself in between Ezra and the gargoyles, the two gargoyles that are on us, so that the two of them are at least, both of them are within five feet of me. Yes. And I am just going to yell very angrily, and I'm going to cast uh, Word of Radiance. So they need to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Left. It's a six, and the boy nope. on the right. Six. Ooh. So they both take four points of radiant damage. Okay. And then I'm going to. How far away am I? Let me do. Let me do the math. Math is hard. Okay, perfect. Um, because I am a uh, protection Asimar, my spare the dying cantrip has a range of 30 feet and it's a bonus action. Nice. So I'm going to cast that and stabilize my bro. Yeah, you can see him lying on the floor there. Yeah, so angry poof of radiant energy. <laughs> angry Do you like spectral beam of love. <laughs> I love you! His wings bubble up from behind Torrent. You piss me off so much, Ezra. This 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 guy has wings. <laughs> oh no, I didn't do that one. Oh, okay. No, this is just this is just like I want to say they appear and then disappear. Imagine <laughs> like uh, kind of like Captain Marvel, just like. Poof. Yeah, watching that movie. All right, I'd watch <laughs> it. All right, Ezra, what's up? This is the craziest day I've ever had. <laughs> okay, what well, the. Uh... Oh, gosh. Hmm. Okay. He's going to just, like, because he's panicking, mm -hmm. and he's going to, like, just, like, try and, like, reach through his stuff and pull out, like, a little flask and mm -hmm. take a drink of alcohol and cast False Life nice. on himself so I can get extra temporary hit points. 1d4 plus 4. Okay, so 7 temporary hit points. Nice. Yay. And did just sort of like look to Torin, because he's already decided this is this is who I have to <laughs> <laughs> answer to. Mm -hmm. That cleric of Kelimbor, they I guess they're maybe okay. good people. I guess. Don't worry, I also know that spell. <laughs> okay, uh, Sigrid Dantier, his breathing seems to have stabilized. You heard Torin shout something, and and point at him, and <laughs> there's that magic aura. That's calmed his breathing. So there's uh, two gargoyles that have uh, kind of poked at him. And when he wasn't like moving or playing, they like rolled him over like a dog might roll over a favorite chew toy. But they, when he stopped responding to them, they flew back up onto their plinths. So there are still two gargoyles on you, uh, but the ones that had been on Dantir are have moved away. We all just have to die, then they won't try to attack us. So I definitely noticed that they, as soon as the person fell down, they went away? Yes. 
I'm still holding. <coughs> Am I still holding the door open? Uh, well, I mean, Hannah blew past you, so and then she closed the other door. Uh, and behind <laughs> you, you suddenly like if uh, Secret's hair is usually like a little loose hanging, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so like there's this blast of hot air from behind you, as like uh, there are at least four, if not fireballs, but like streams of fire that are like scorching the ground behind you don't even have to turn to feel that somebody left the oven on well i close the door <laughs> and then i drop to the ground <laughs> just like collapse Yay! okay um the two gargoyles who are on you kind of like poke and they start prodding and i need either a performance or a deception yes. check are you playing dead yes. this is amazing yes <laughs> Oh, 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 <laughs> um, yeah, they're both the same, mm -hmm. so. You got this. Holy shit. <laughs> nice. I was not nice. expecting that since my modifier is negative one. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, there. <laughs> <laughs> they're not quite buying it kind of like when they they're they're poking at you and then they start grabbing at the at the wind fan and they're like pulling on it maybe secret still has a grip on that part and they, they pull a little it's more mortis. yeah uh and they start snapping at each other um so one of them is going to try to they don't believe that you're faking it unless unless this one doesn't doesn't make a move and so uh, they're going to claw at you with advantage on this one. So they'll each do a claw, and let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. Let's roll this d20. So on the first one, as it comes down with a 10, uh, you kind of take it? Yeah, you take it on your armor, and you're easily not swayed by anything. And then the second one uh, comes in with a 21. Yeah, pits. Okay, so that uh, blood is flowing at that. So uh, I need you to do a constitution saving throw to kind of not cry out in this way. Oh, no, he got you. <laughs> <laughs> it screeched a little. Okay. Um, the one who has missed uh, kind of didn't like that its, its toy was not working. Uh, but the one who got you uh, does take his second attack at this point uh, because he noticed that you are up. So that's seven slashing damage from his first claw and four from the second. Cool. Uh, how's your health, Secret? Uh, I am down to 19, I think. Okay. No, 20, 23. 20, okay. 23. Fair health. So as it stands, Hannah is outside yep. Ravenloft Courtyard. Uh, yep. A room full of dragons in between her and Secret. Secret yep. on the ground. One gargoyle remaining in this foyer uh, against her and Dantir. Torin and Ezra, two gargoyles on them. And uh, somewhere there is a clock that has just marked down uh, half an hour. And that will be our game today. <laughs> As you've made it to Raven, almost all of you made it to Castle Ravenloft. <laughs> so much happened. Cool. Hey, dinner was gone. <laughs> hey, it was good food. You guys are gonna be sad you didn't eat any. It was. Uh, it was delicious. I might not be. <laughs> when when your when your curse starts taking effect, we won't be. <laughs> Outside, as you go, it's like the stuffing. It suddenly goes <laughs> bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh god no and that was fine who would poison food that seems such a, a um, someone who doesn't need has, to eat it has <laughs> the health ex inspection uh Strahd they, is the ancient he is the land he is the health inspector <laughs> <laughs> if you Hello? have he uh, inspects I... you for health and then if you have it he takes it <laughs> I'm, I see. I'm, the land. I'm your health inspector today <laughs> uh so yeah oh, no. Uh, it's a good game. We've run to uh, a little longer than we usually do, but uh, thanks for playing that, guys. We'll see. We'll pick up exactly where we leave off next Thursday at uh, 6 p.m. Central Time. 
uh, whatever time that is in PST and EST. With <laughs> four and seven. Yeah, that's the ones. I don't have to think about that at all. Yeah, and we'll we'll have to change out Mr. Tree's box so that it now <laughs> reads Ezra. And uh, uh, we didn't have to change out Secret and Hannah, though we will have to find out where your stuff went. <laughs> I mean, the operative word is we didn't have to change out Secret or Hannah yet. Yet. Oh, true. <laughs> yet. How long would you be able to survive with dinner knives as weapons? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is the question of the day. Hey, you have a fan. Yep, you got True. a fan. You have at they, least one. Fan. Their name is Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> and looks like Hansi got to do you one good turn. <laughs> also, he might have ran a sleight of hand against your passive with passive perception and you know, taken some things this time, but it's fine. Everything They're works. Fine. Yep. Everything's fine. Everything Just is fine. You great. guys enjoy your wormlings. I'm gonna go on to Barovia. I'll see you there. Have fun. In Barovia. <laughs> oh wait. Only happy fun times in Barovia. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Good night. Bye. Night.